Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. In today's episode I am going to be sharing my autumn sewing plans. Now if you watched the last episode up a couple of weeks ago because moving forward I'm going to be posting a longer length video every other week. I did a really comprehensive wardrobe audit and I found this so incredibly helpful. I found some really significant takeaways and I've basically used all of that information that I noted down to start thinking about what I want to make and really what I need to make. I have the terrible habit of getting very carried away and going off piste and sometimes that's worked out really well but quite often it means that I've made things that I don't wear or I half finish and that really isn't a sustainable way of doing things. If you haven't done a wardrobe audit I think it's a really really good activity to check in with your wardrobe and what you have, what you're not wearing, what needs repairing and I have a wardrobe audit in my dressmaker's journal which I find really really useful. I'm just sharing the strategies that I use and that is available in my shop and I have got a little special September beginning of autumn little treat for anybody who is interested and that's 40% off my dressmaker's journal so I'll pop the information and the code in the show notes and you can use that if you wish. A quick recap of my audit that I did some of the information that I found was certain things needed to be repaired like my 1930s black bow dress that I bought from Sunless Antiques. There are gaps like waterproof outerwear and an overdress of some kind. Then there were certain things that I wanted to remake including the shepherd skirt and then I realised that some of my most worn things are items like my Bella tea dress and my Crazy Paisley patchwork dress. So what I thought would be quite a good idea is to come up with different versions of those patterns. So adapting my favourite things and just making a different version. Not necessarily the same dress in a different fabric but something just slightly different because I know that that dress is something that I'm going to wear. So these plans, these things that I want to make and I've really scaled it down. I've only sort of got a handful of things and my aim is to spend the next few weeks making these things as beautifully as I can and then reviewing those and sharing what I make with you rather than my normal haphazard. These are all my ideas, these are all the fabrics that I've found. I'm going to make loads of stuff with them which just makes me feel quite overwhelmed. Never used to but it does now. So I'm really really pleased with what I've got planned and I am going to share it with you now. One of the wardrobe audit criteria is things that you've worn a lot and really enjoyed and feel really good in and for me over the summer the shepherd skirt was really a standout. Now I could just make lots of other versions of that but I thought what about another skirt, something else that is going to give me the same sort of feel is still vintage inspired or vintage, replica vintage and I can wear it with all my blouses and tops because that really opened up the scope of my wardrobe. So I found and I'm probably sure that I have shared this with you before, this vintage Vogue American designers designed by Anne Klein. So in this you get this fabulous blouse which I must make at some point but also this sort of sailory type skirt with these button details. I don't think those are workable buttons. I don't have my glasses on to be able to read any of this small print. I'm going to have to draft this pattern in my size using my blocks and using this paper pattern as a reference because this is most probably most definitely not my size. I really like this skirt though because it has this sort of slightly sailory feel. It reminds me of 1930s skirts that I've seen in lots of photographs which I find really really inspiring. And I have to go with this, this black, there's lots of black fabric this time which I know 
doesn't go all zhuzhy on camera isn't the most exciting but you get the idea this is a really beautiful italian wool and i've actually cut out a dress in this as well that i need to finish so i'm hoping that i've got enough fabric here but if i don't have enough fabric for that skirt in this fabric i'm going to look for something very very similar and i love the fact that i could do maybe some embroidered covered buttons which is something that i really love to do and that this will go with nearly all of my blouses in my wardrobe the next thing that i want to make i thought in terms of an outfit is actually a blouse that i've been playing around with for quite a while i didn't actually end up making the blouse that i thought i was going to out of this lovely sort of neon pink dobby spot that I got from Merchant and Mills as a, a birthday treat the same time I got the shepherd skirt pattern and fabric. I've recently been really inspired by Pierrot clowns and I put together this collage just using Pinterest collages. Usually I cut everything out and I love cutting out bits of paper and creating actual real life collages but I just sort of put this idea together because it was a a sort of a little notion that I had quite late one night and I just love this concept of Pierrot collars it's sort of been popping up for me and I've been noticing it in vintage outfits and antique photos and images paintings and so on so I think what I'm going to do with this fabric is still make a very simple blouse but do one with a really lovely Pierrot collar and then I think that these together the really lovely cream and pink and the black is almost my favorite color combination will be fabulous and the tutorial for this i'm going to do a a full pattern cutting tutorial beginner friendly tutorial the type of thing that i normally do on patreon for my lovely coven members i'm going to do on youtube just in case you feel the need to have a piero blouse for your autumn winter or otherwise wardrobes the other takeaway from my audit was that my most worn dress really, other than the sort of vampire's wife dresses and crazy paisley dress, are my Bella T dresses and versions of. So I really felt like I needed to go back to basics with my colour palette and focus on black and find a, another version of the Bella T dress, so develop something. So way back when I did my vintage utility capsule collection and I visited the wonderful Sunless Antiques, which is just near me in St. Leonard's, they had this incredible dress hanging up and it was white and it looked very similar in concept to the Bella T dress, but it had these lovely sort of details. I don't know how to explain them, but they're sort of ruffles on this dress. Still got the little Peter Pan collar and instead of the A-line skirt, it had a slightly gathered skirt again with this sort of interesting ruffle detail. So what I'm going to do is use my Bella tea dress pattern and I'm going to create something quite similar in this black fabric. It's a viscose crepe that I bought from a new shop that's opened here in Hastings Cloth Control and I bought this off of their sale table so it was only £2.49 and I've washed it, haven't ironed it and it's really got that feel of a, a vintagey fabric. It has got a slight sheen, slightly shiny, which that dress in Sunless had although that one was in ivory. So I'm going to do something along those lines in this fabric and I think I will get loads and loads of wear in it. I will have to look out for those sort of ruffly, puffily details and make sure that I get them bang on because otherwise that could sort of be a bit of a, a, a reason why I might not wear the dress. So I am going to be quite circumspect about those details but I'm really really looking forward to making that one and I think I'm going to do it in short sleeves and then wear some kind of cardigan over it or actually a Chinese jacket that can be reversible so it's shocking pink on one side and black on the other so I think that would be a really good pairing with this dress. I'm going to be organising my wardrobe using my sewing project pages in my 
dressmaker's journal so that I keep a sort of a an organized document of my progress so this page that you can just download as many times as you like from the PDF that gets sent to you has got the pattern details supplies needed fitting notes and in here because I'm doing a different version of this skirt in this fitting notes box I'm going to sort of write down those details so the measurements of that because that's not really going to be a pattern it's going to be sort of a rectangle but I need to get those measurements correct and then swatches of the fabrics that I've used so that should I come back to that dress should I decide to make it again I've got all the information here so each of these things I'm going to be documenting with my Myrtle May little sketchy doodles which I'm popping in images of so that you can see and then these sort of quite structured notes that will help me stay organized as I'm making and alongside that more creative activity that allows me to think about outfits and is just so enjoyable it's one of my favorite things to do I've also got these quite structured and organized system that will hopefully keep me really on track and motivated I have to say I'm really really pleased with how I've organized myself this season and I'm actually really really looking forward to making all of these things so let's get on with the next thing over on Patreon, Tara Stitch Coven in August, I focused on Frida Kahlo, the wonderful, peerless, beautiful, magical Frida Kahlo, and had a look at some of the wardrobe staples, the way in which she adorned herself, as well as the way in which she appeared in her art. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And one of the dresses that she used to wear was this sort of just fit and flare dress, quite a classic shape, but it's very much part of the Tijuanan folk dress, for want of a better term. And I really thought that would be a wonderful thing to wear especially this sort of 40s does Victoriana Edwardiana all of these kind of ideas are bumping around in my brain and they sort of all interlink and become something and that's why I do like doing my sketchbook and I like doing my little Myrtle May drawings because that's where these ideas sort of actually consolidate and become viable rather than these sort of fantastical things but nothing wrong with fantastical anyway I got a copy of this it's a simplicity 1940s vintage and it's almost exactly the same style dress as the one that Frida Kahlo was wearing in the very early 1930s and I bought thinking about staying to a particular color I bought some more black fabric it doesn't look sexy on screen I am sorry but this was also from cloth control and it was also on their sale table and this is just your very standard crepe viscose crepe really beautifully heavy it really does feel very very vintage it's quite drapey so it's going to do something slightly interesting with this but I'm really looking forward to it and then with that I thought I'm going to do the sort of sweetheart neckline version and around that I've got these two vintage laces so this one sort of more guipier lace like this and then this really pretty chantilly lace trim that I think around the neckline and then around the sleeve cuffs would be really really beautiful and I'm hoping that this skirt will be full of drama and it kind of makes me also think of Hammer Horror and one of my favourite um, films from their oeuvre which is The Haunted Palace which is just silly bonkers fun but there are some fabulous dresses, fabulous frocks in that one and I am very partial to Hammer Horror. One amendment that I think I might make from looking at this is that it's got um, buttons on the back. I think I will probably do a zip fastening for this one just because it's it's almost impossible to do up buttons on one's back on oneself and as much as Ghost is a wonderful very intelligent feline familiar I don't think he'll be able to button me up into my frock. 
Alongside organising my wardrobe and changing out my seasonal wardrobe, I've been attempting to tidy my studio. It's got so messy in here and it's just so out of hand and it just no longer works as it is with where I am on my sewing journey. So I'm doing a bit of a mammoth tidy up and it just is unbearable for me to look at but as I was sorting out my fabrics and I'm going to be really brutal and, and get rid of a lot of fabric I think I found a couple of fabrics that I had completely forgotten about so one of them is just this Rose and Hubble cotton a really lovely sagey mossy green with teeny tiny little stars on I've got two meters of this and I've had it for years and not done anything with it as it's just two meters it's not quite enough to do a vampire's wife dress like the one that i'm wearing which was a patreon project and then i also found this fabric that i bought from a charity shop it's a vintage it's cotton with all these lovely roses and i just accidentally put them together i didn't think about the fact that they would go together and I actually really love them together. One of the things I think when you're mixing prints is that you kind of get a wonderful contrast if you've got a slightly larger print and then a very ditzy print and then there are, you know, colours that sort of connect together. So what I thought I would do is one of my crazy paisley patchwork dresses but it would obviously just be crazy patchwork dress and I will do the front and back bodice in this and then a gathered skirt in this probably using the simplicity pattern that I've just shown you with the a ruffle around the bottom and then the sleeves in this as well and if I've got enough fabric left over a Piero collar on that as well so I'm going to be calling that my crazy paisley piero dress and i'm really excited about it i mean it could be absolutely horrendous but then i thought that about the crazy paisley patchwork dress and that is one of my most favorite things to wear i feel so happy in that dress ghost concurs he's on his way over he might knock the camera one does apologize he doesn't understand this whole youtube filming malarkey see wobbly camera um, and to go with that, not a sewing thing, but a quick little knitting thing, I knitted one of these little pullovers quite a while ago in preparation to wear this autumn because one of the things with these Vampire's Wife dresses, the normal Falconetti style, this one's a Kate one and it's got all these sort of ruffles and it's got um, all sorts of things going on on it, but the general sort of fit and flare dresses with poofly sleeves, can become really difficult to put something over them and then you feel a bit cold so i thought that this was a really good solution so i've done one in this lovely pink tweed and i've knitted loads of my malmaison roses so that there's this whole sort of flower thing floral explosion going on again could be horrendous but i am in love with the idea so i enjoyed that so much i thought i'll make another one and i like the sort of this kind of colour thing going on here. So when I was in Tenterton recently, I picked up a ball, another ball of this wool, which is a homespun prism by King Cole. And it's a double knitting and it's in the colour. Bear with me. Bear with me. Hold on a minute. Moorland. Moorland. Uh, need glasses to do all of these things and I just thought that that when it knits up so I've just started knitting it would actually work really beautifully over this so very colorful totally different to these sort of black items that I am making but I just know that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it and when it gets colder I can put thermals on underneath wear my boots and be perfectly happy and then also in cloth control i saw this fabric and i thought actually that with that would be really beautiful this is like a very deep chocolatey brown almost black i haven't bought this fabric i'm just pondering it at the moment hopefully they won't sell out but i just think if 
that sort of works as a concept then I've got some dresses that I'm just going to really enjoy wearing all through autumn and the main thing I want to feel is really excited about my wardrobe so I'm this pattern this king hole pattern that goes with this wool really really simple to to knit really quick and I just at the moment need things that are not complicated because my knitting game has just gone really awry so I know that this is a win and I know that I'm going to wear it over these dresses so I feel quite excited. So those are my autumn sewing plans for the sort of rest of September going into October. Five things to make and one thing to knit. All of them I'm really excited about I feel that they're going to really earn their keep in my vintage inspired and sustainably creative wardrobe as far as possible. I feel that spending the time doing that very detailed and methodical wardrobe audit was really beneficial and I've identified a few things that I really want to focus on. There were loads of other things I wanted to make but I'm being as organised as possible so that I can create things that I'm just genuinely loving and really excited to wear. Don't forget that if you want to grab a copy of my dressmaker's journal it's 40% off between now and the end of September and I'll pop the link to that in the show notes so that you can go and get one should you wish to but you don't have to it's just there if you would like. It's been really really lovely spending time with you today and I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my sewing plans and one knitting plan. I really appreciate that you take the time to spend the time with me here and especially to those of you who did click the thanks super thanks button on my last video. I am just so heartened and really truly grateful. I hope this season is treating you kindly and that wherever you are in the world you're keeping very safe and well. Till next time my lovelies. Bye.